Welcome back to the Bowtie Goat YouTube channel where if you try hard enough, you can be the next DECA goat. Let's take a look at how to get those prepared project presentations, those written event boards ready for ICDC so you can make it to the DECA stage. Let's get started. This year, my chapter had 56 different competitors attend ICDC. We competed in some roleplay events and roughly 20 different of those prepared event presentations. And to do that, we had to come up with a way to get all those presentation boards, if the kids are gonna do the physical presentations, to ICDC. So what I'd like to share with you today is let's take a look at some of those projects, talk about how we got them to ICDC, go over some of the lessons learned and things that I will definitely repeat and definitely not repeat for the upcoming year, and also break down the cost so you can make the best decision for your students and your chapter. This year, I shipped all of the projects to and from ICDC via FedEx. I used a medium-sized FedEx TV shipping box and was able to get approximately 30 boards in each box. I had about 70 boards, so I needed two boxes. FedEx is not the cheapest way to get the boards to ICDC, but from an experienced year previously, I didn't have to deal with the boards in the airport or on the plane or to and from the airport. And then what I did was I saved those shipping boxes and I reused one of the two boxes to ship materials home that the students wanted to bring home. And those are what I'm gonna show you today. When I break down the FedEx shipping costs and I ship them in bulk, but my FedEx shipping costs were about $5 per board. Again, way worth it, but definitely not the cheapest way to get the boards to ICDC. I know some folks like to have the boards printed and prepared at ICDC. Some folks like to take them on the plane with them to each their own. But with a big chapter, I like to put them all in one or two boxes and have them shipped to the hotel directly. Another weird thing that you figure out is the hotel usually has a holding fee. I think I had to pay $25 or $30 to get the box out of the holding room at the hotel. But again, considering the headache that I saved by not having these things in the airport, it was a big win for my chapter. This year, most of our projects were designed in Canva. Then my students printed their posters through our school's print shop. This was actually free to my students. I strongly encouraged my students to build projects that would fit on a phone board that was 24 by 36 inches. That allowed me to buy them in bulk and made the shipping of them way easier. Then we used a spray adhesive, which I'll show you in a bit, to stick the posters to the boards. Uh, these three boards are just examples of the results of the process. Certainly not flawless, and we'll talk about lessons learned, but very inexpensive. That DECA December project, by the way, won fifth place in the world. For next year, I'm gonna have my kids do basically the same thing. We're gonna have the boards printed through my school district's printing office, but one of the things we're gonna change is we're gonna put them on glossy paper and not a matte computer paper. That allows us to do two things. That glossy paper is thicker. It's a little bit easier to work with when you stick it on a board. But this spray adhesive, the spray adhesive I really liked for the computer paper presentations that you see behind me, but it was too hard to use and you couldn't get a lot on the paper without it making the, uh, the ink really messy. So we're gonna go with a glossy paper and that liquid then adhesive and that will make the process so much smoother and we ought to be able to get the paper really nice and flat on those boards so it'll look nearly professional at a very reduced cost. Yes, professionally printed boards are definitely nicer. These boards were professionally printed and they look great, but I'm gonna argue with you that it's not worth the cost. Some of the groups went with the smaller boards that were 20 inches by 30 inches to save on cost, you know, like the Nothing But Cake project that won sixth place in their world in their event. But if we take all of the boards that I have, I wanna show you the, the least awesome board compared to the professionally printed one. And the least awesome one went to states and to nationals and they didn't redo anything, so it got beat up in the process. If you look close up, the difference is huge. The least professionally printed one is wrinkly and it doesn't look all that great. However, when you look at it from a distance, from a judge's seat, looking across a table at a presentation or an easel, the difference isn't all that different. And another tip to note here, the darker the background color with the lighter font, makes those wrinkles much harder to see. So if we go back to the picture of the three types of boards, the middle board here is as wrinkly as the board I just showed you, but the Deca December board is printed with those darker colors, which hides the wrinkles better. That's definitely another tip to remember for next year. I prefer those flat presentation boards. I think they're easier to use than a trifold, but when you do the flat presentation boards, you're required to have that presentation stand with you. Here are two trifold boards that my chapter used. The one on the left used the posters for the inside of the trifold, sort of like the process we talked about with the flat presentation boards. She came in top 10 in the world in her event, by the way, and you can watch a recorded presentation of hers up top. The other group cut out and glued everything directly on the board, which looks okay, but again, I have a bias towards using the flat boards versus the trifolds. So I don't really like trifolds, but if you're going to use a trifold, I would suggest to get the edge or to have a leg up here that you put some content on the outside of your presentation board. So I know that we're looking at two different boards here, but pretend the McDonald's board on the right 
is the shut version on the left. So if I were the McDonald's group, I would put the McDonald's logo and some information on the outside of the board that's folded so that the judge can see it before they even get started. It's just a way to enhance the presentation before the presentation even begins and really wow that judge. So let's recap the lessons learned. Number one, we're gonna print on glossy paper and not regular computer paper, which will then two, allow us to use a liquid adhesive and not a spray adhesive. Number three, use a dark colored background with lighter text. It's gonna give you uh, the ability to hide some of those imperfections when you do it. But number four, and I learned this the hard way, uh, when you ship your presentations, put them in a garbage bag when you ship them, not so much for the shipping, but when you get to the hotel, if anything happens in the hotel, and your projects are in the bags, there's a better chance that they'll stay protected. Unfortunately, this year, my hotel had a leak in it and damaged three or four of my group's projects. And that was Monday night before the Tuesday morning award ceremony where you find out if you're a finalist. So they didn't know whether they would need their boards or not. So put the boards in a garbage bag so they can stay in a garbage bag the entire time at the hotel and they can lessen the chances of them getting wet. Now about those costs, just for comparison's sake, I wanted to look at what Walmart would charge for printing. And I know that you might be able to find a different sort of print shop, but I wanted to use Walmart as an example of like, okay, you could get the posters printed at Walmart or you get a, a foam board printed at Walmart. And we're gonna use for comparison's sake, just a single-sided board. If you go to Walmart and get the 20 by 30 foam board printed, that's gonna cost you $23. If you go to Walmart and get the poster pr printed on the glossy paper and make it photo print, that's gonna cost you $20. The foam boards, when you stick them to the foam boards, cost $4. So really at Walmart to get the poster printed versus get it printed directly to the foam board doesn't make that big a difference. So knowing the cost of a $20 professionally printed poster or a $23 professionally printed foam board and knowing that my kids on average had four sides, so either front and back of a foam board or four separate sides, it comes out to $80 to $100 to professionally print either a posters or the foam boards. If that was your choice, I would definitely just print directly on the foam boards. It looks way nicer. My local school district can print the posters for us, so that effectively is free. The foam boards are about $4 a piece. So if you put foam boards front and back and front and back, so that's about $8 for two foam boards, and then you add the glue adhesive. Doing it that way, students can print their posters and, and prepare them for roughly $10. So I would argue the difference then between the professionally printed board and the board that you can make on your own is almost negligible, and it's not gonna make that big a difference for your ICDC presentation, but it's gonna save you $70. So that's how my relatively large chapter put all these projects together and what we've learned and what we're gonna keep and what we're gonna change for the upcoming year. I encourage you to share your comments or questions in the comment boxes down below so that we can learn from each other and make these projects even better. I can't wait to see all of them at ICDC this year and best of luck on your DECA success journey.